Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be looking at some material UI stuff once again. And this time around I'll be looking at some upcoming components that we will probably see be released very soon into the uh, core project. Okay, so in order to um, kind of start playing around with, with this stuff or even use it, you can um, start, you can install the material UI lab library. Okay, so if we um, open up our console here to install the lab component, what I did was I just said npm uh, install material UI core, then I made a space and then did material, material UI uh, lab like this, okay? Just to get both the core package and the lab package. We always need to make sure we have the core package, otherwise our lab package won't work, okay? And um, then just to get the dev server up and running, we can say npm start and we can hide this one, okay? Oh, that's not the hide button. Let's just pull it down, okay? All right, so um, now we are started. So the reason why I made this video is because we have some pretty cool components coming up in the new version of Material UI, some pretty cool components uh, that I myself have been wanting to uh, start using for a while. And then those components are the skeleton component, the tree view component, and the rating component. The rating component is pretty simple, I guess, but you know, all these components just makes lives easier when developing apps, uh, especially if we want to develop apps at fast pace, don't have to create all these components ourselves. We can just kind of pull it in. It's very cool. Um, Right, so uh, in this video, I just kind of want to showcase these different components, how to use them. And uh, I'm just gonna start from one end here, basically. So let's start with the skeleton component, okay? The skeleton component is basically, well, if you don't know what a skeleton component is, it's used to kind of show some markup while we are loading in data. If you have been using Facebook or YouTube or whatever, you might notice that while the API is grabbing some data, we have some gray boxes or whatever to fill up the space. And the reason for that is it looks kind of cool. Uh, we can see that something is going on and it will prevent the UI from jumping basically, which can be a struggle if you don't have any placeholders. So let's kind of look at the API for the skeleton component. And uh, well, it's pretty simple. <laughs> so um, let's try to pull in a skeleton component here, just like this. Now, this won't really show anything cause we're just currently inside a div with no height or width or anything. So let's put in some props here. Let's put in some width, 200 maybe and some height, that could be 100, okay? Now, let's try to open Chrome. Okay, this is how it looks in Chrome. Let's try to full screen it. Now, we get this gray box right here. And it's, as you can see, it's animating uh, the uh, opacity, I believe it is. It's like fading in and out a little bit to indicate that's something is loading. Okay, pretty simple. Um, just like in, um, well, let's try to just increase the width here just to see. And let's try to make another one. Okay, let's see. All right, now we have two gray boxes, kind of like animating there. Okay, cool, it's working. Now, just like when we declare a button, we, or even typography component, we can pass in a variant here. 
So if we want a different kind of skeleton component, say we want a circle, we can pass in circle. And then it changes. Okay, very simple. And uh, yeah, I don't want to say much more about that, but maybe I could kind of show an example of how you would use it in a real app. So let's just do it quickly here. Let's make a loading state using the use state hook. Let's initially pull it to false, okay? Now make sure we pull in new state like this. Okay, so when we first load the app, we might have a loading state false, right? And we want to do an API call. And this is usually done inside use effect. So we will probably have a use effect like this, doing some stuff. Um, and in this case, we're just gonna pass in an empty array so we don't run it twice. Okay, so in here we would like to do some API stuff, some side effect. And to kind of replicate that, we could make a, let's just say, let's just make a set timeout, okay? Make a set timeout here. So let's put in two seconds. Imagine we're doing some API stuff here. Let's just say API, oh, API. And then we might set the loading state to true after this API stuff is done. Now, what you wanna do down here is something like this, okay? Just kind of inline it, maybe, if you want. You can do like, are we loading? If we're loading, show this component. Otherwise show a div that says, because mm, they done. Okay, just some very basic. Now, we need to make sure loading is actually true. So when we get inside use effect, we can say set loading to true initially. And then we fire off our timeout, okay? Let's just see how it looks. Opening Chrome. Oh, we forgot to pull in use effect. Okay, pulling in use effect. Now it should work. Uh, that one really quickly. Uh, let's put the timeout up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm actually messing up here. It should be false. When we are done, loading it should show uh, it should disappear right so it starts out as a gray box and then it says done and we actually do see the done state as just very quickly at the beginning because it's initially set to false so you could argue putting this to false or true to begin with would be a good idea since we're always loading some api stuff on this page okay so this would probably be better to not create any confusing confusion even. Okay, cool, That that's it for skeleton component. I don't really wanna dive deep into that one. So um, let's take the next component that are coming up and that is the tree view component, tree view component. And uh, the API for this component is very simple. It's uh, very cool. So what you want to do when you make a tree view is to have the tree view component as a wrapper around everything and then just kind of add your tree items. So oh, let's make a tree item here. And what you can do is pass a label. So let's just put in option one here maybe. Okay. Now this is actually good enough. Um, Let's try to see how it looks in Chrome. Okay, we get an option one here. We can click it, but well, nothing really happens here. We just have one item. Now, if you want to have nested items, uh, you can just pass them in as children. Okay, so there could be an option 1.1 here, like that. And just below this option one, we might have an option two, yeah? So three, 
item put in label option two like this okay now we have our two items and because I nested something inside the first item so when I click it we get our option 1.1 here and we didn't really have to do any setup really we just threw in some some children here and yeah this one doesn't have any children so when we click on this one nothing okay now um, if you're making a tree view like this you're probably wanting probably want to add some icons to kind of indicate that you can click here and the props we need for that will be the uh, collapse icon prop where we can pass in whatever icon you want for the collapsing uh, to collapse the uh, tree item and another prop called expand icon okay these two props you will probably be using these a lot when working with the tree item component and currently I do not have the uh, the icon package in here but let me just try to pass anything here let me just try to pass an h2 just to see what happens and then h5 actually sorry and then here let's just try to pass in something see if it works i'm actually curious okay so we get that hay here and when we click it it goes to high hey hi hey hi and uh, yeah probably you want a uh, an icon here instead depending on your use case of course okay that's all for tree view the last component I want to show you guys is the rating component and the API is very simple so I import a rating from material UI lab at the top now all I have to do is just to put in the value here so let's say we have a value of 4 okay Let's go to our browser. Oh, we have four stars here. Okay, very simple. Nothing happens if we click. And that is because we didn't pass an unchange handler. So if we actually want to change this value, we can pass in an unchange handler. And as usual, in material UI, we get the event first and then we get the value that of interest. So we could be like set rating here just to inline it and then put the value there now i don't have a rating state yet but i could quickly make that one let's just default it to free okay so and then so value here we put in rating save that and bam we have it three stars if i click another one it will change Okay, very sweet, very sweet, very easy API. Uh, one cool thing about the rating component is we can add a precision prop. This, that could be 1.5 for example, that means we can do half stars. So if I reload, uh, this jank is a little annoying. Um, we can do half stars, so I can actually click around the middle and to make a half one, and that's that's pretty neat. That that's not that easy to implement, just just like that. So that's a very uh, neat feature, or neat prop to have available. Yeah. Okay. Tree view, skeleton, rating. These components are coming up in a near material UI release, hopefully. And um, so far, very, very clean components. They, they work as you would expect. Um, very simple API and it follows, they follow really very well the current uh, structure of the library. Uh, prop names and, and things like that. Okay. 
If you guys like this video, give it a like. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.